Those are the main courses you need to enter a four-year college. Okay, then at the bottom you see your testing. You need 2025 EOC testing. You must pass three of six tests in order to graduate. I repeat, you must pass three of the six. So, for this incoming class, I believe it's English one and or English two. It's algebra or geometry and biology or American history. Now let me try to give you a little clarity on what's going on with testing. Everyone understood during COVID that they waited for testing, okay? But how does that affect this graduating class? That means if you took American history or biology, and I'm only gonna stick to those two because those are the two tests you take your 11th grade year. If you took American history and biology course and you passed the course, they are supposed to waive those tests. So what's probably going to happen is that we're going to go back in the system and exempt you from those tests if you took those classes last year and passed it. I'm not talking about this year. If you're currently in those classes right now, then you're going to take the test this year. If you're currently in any testing class, English 1, English 2, Algebra, Geometry, Biology, or American History, if you're currently taking the course, whether it's on Plato or it's on your schedule, you will be testing for that this semester. Please don't get that confused. Y'all need to take responsibility as well because a lot has happened and there's a lot going on and there's a lot on me in this point. So I want y'all to be responsible enough to know that if you know you didn't pass that test, once we start the testing, you let Ms. Richard or Ms. Martin know, look, or one of the counselors, hey, I need to take that test so that we can make sure you take it, okay? So that's all I'm gonna say about testing. Moving on to ACT, many of you all didn't have that opportunity last year due to COVID to even take the ACT. Some of you still took it over the summer, summer, some of y'all waited to take it last week, which means that's gonna be your first set of scores, okay? You need at least a 20 ACT to meet the requirements for the top university grant, okay? So in order to meet tops and to get your tuition paid at a public university, you need at least a 20. Now the flip side to that is, in order to get into a university, you need an 18 in English and a 19 in math. I will say, due to COVID, a lot of the colleges were flexible. They weren't really worried about the ACT score. As long as you had the GPA and all the required courses, they allowed you to get in. I don't know that that's going to happen for this graduating class. So that's why I'm telling you you need an 18 in English and a 19 in math. Um, so when you get your score, you know your score is not at least an 18, that lets you know you need to test again. Today, we gave you an ACT flyer with the next test dates. I believe there's another test in December. Prior to COVID, we only were allowed two waivers, which means you can use those waivers to waive the fee of the ACT test if you have free or reduced lunch. Well, ACT has made some changes. You're not allowed four waivers. And not four per year. It's four for the four years that you've been in high school. They do keep track of it, so don't think you just get no on us when you come and ask for a waiver. They're going to go when you put that number in at the top of the waiver. They keep track of how many you use. So even if you use the waiver, but you didn't get to go take the test, they count that as a waiver to use. So just know that we got some more in the office. You can come here on lunchtime and you can get your waiver so you can go ahead and sign up ahead of time for the December test. Please note, when you sign up for the test, not only is it waiving the fee, there's a study guide that you can also order online. They waive that fee as well, so that is free. Take advantage of it. That can be your preparation for the ACT. We also have some of the ACT prep books in our office, and I should have gone to bring them, but you can come and pick that up as well. Okay, so you definitely got to continue to keep taking the ACT. Do we have any questions? Okay, so you can go ahead and put the transcript and the checklist to the side. And we can move on to some of the sheets that you have. So I've already talked about the ACT sheet. Let's move to the scholarship sheet. What's your question? 
That means you need to take it or you don't have it. But you can speak to this point out. Okay, so for the scholarship handout that you gave up, it's very important that you take some time when you just sit at home, um, using social media, you take some time and Google some of these websites for these scholarships. Believe it or not, all scholarships do not require you to be an A student. It doesn't require you to be a 4.0 student. Sometimes some of these scholarships want you to have at least a 2.0 or a 2.5, and they want you to write an essay, y'all. Sometimes it's just that simple. But if you don't take the time to actually go in and look it up and do your research, you'll never know what money is available for you. Okay? You also need to look into your community. There may be scholarships with your church. There may be a scholarship with your job. You won't know unless you ask. And believe it or not, I'll probably speak about that a little later. You will be amazed how much that scholarship money can really help you when you're trying to pay for your education. As we get more scholarship information, we'll find a way to either put it on our Google Classroom, because I don't think this more is doing a lot of announcements. So y'all got to keep up with the Google Classroom page to see when we're trying to put information out there to you. Um, I think I put something recently about financial aid. October 1st was the first day for you to apply for your financial aid. That's the FOSFA application, okay? That's a free application. So please don't get scammed. Don't get caught up with these websites saying that you have to pay. You do not pay to fill out a free application for your financial aid. I had a student that said something this morning about she had some problems. All her friends are finished, but she's not finished. We do offer individual help, but right now, now that we're trying to do all these senior transfers for 253 seniors, we're probably not going to be able to give you much individual time right now, but we will at the beginning of November. We normally have someone that comes in from the state and do a presentation about financial aid, where you can invite your parents so that your parents can be educated and give them the steps on how to apply. But before they come, we want you to apply for something called your FOSFA ID. Both you and your parent must apply for a FOSFA ID. You need the FOSFA ID to sign the financial aid application electronically. Nothing is really being done by the mail. Everything is done online. So for them to know that you are really who you say you are, they have to verify your social security number. So something you can work on tonight as a little homework assignment, is you need to apply for your FOSFA ID. And I'm going to be, you have that actually on one of those handouts. I'm not certain which one, but you have the website in which you can use to apply for your FOSFA ID. Um, they're going to add some important information from your parents that only your parents know. So you need your parents to apply for their own FOSFA ID then you apply for yours. If your parents already have a FOSFA ID from a previous child that's in college, they can use the same ID. If they do not remember the ID, they can hit where it says forget password so that they can reset and get a new password. So again, you need to apply for your FOSFA ID before you could actually start your FOSFA application. Or let me not say that. It allows you to start, but you will need that FOSFA ID to sign the electronically. Okay? Any questions about that? There are grants as well as loans that you can take out for your to pay for your tuition. Grants is money that you won't have to pay back. Okay, that's free money. There's something called a Pell Grant that's based on your parents income. There's something called SEOG grant that's based on whether or not you have a financial need. If you want to major in education, there's grant money for people who want to be teachers. If any of your parents don't meet the guidelines for the Pell Grant, but they were active in the military and died in the military, there's a grant for that. So you have to a lot of this stuff is need based and there are always deadlines. So the sooner the better, okay? So y'all need to be applying for your financial aid right now. Don't wait till May to fill out your financial aid application. Even if you're unsure where you're gonna go, just get the application done. They're gonna use 
your parents' tax information from the previous year. And what happens is there's a tool online when you're completing the financial aid application. You simply click a button and it will input your parents' tax information. Okay? So keep in mind, they're going to use the information from last year. So you don't need to say, oh, mom, I can't do my, my financial aid because you haven't filled out your taxes. No, that's why they're going to use it from the previous year. Because a lot of kids used to put it off, and we don't want you to put it off. Okay, that's very important. That's something you need to be working on right now. You can save it there. So let's say you started today, and you get somewhere where you don't understand the question, you can come to school, email us, so that we can help you work through, and you can go back in your application and continue working. Okay? So it's actually a work in progress when you're actually filling out the financial aid. So again, back to the grants and the loans. So the grants is money you don't pay back. But a loan is money you borrow and you have to pay it back. So if I loan you $20, that means I want my $20 back, right? So whenever you borrow these loans for school, six months after you graduate, or if you choose not to graduate and you drop out of school, six months after, they want you to start making payments, okay? Let's say you only borrow $5,000, but you don't have a job, but you just dropped out of school. You still, it's your responsibility, y'all, this is so important. It's your responsibility to make some type of arrangements with the loan company so that you can get on the payment plan, even if it's $50 a month. You gotta pay them something. What happens is, and this is when people don't educate you, because I didn't learn this until grad school. What happens is, people take out these loans for college, they drop out of school, or they finish school, they don't find a job, they don't make any kind of arrangements, they don't pay for their school loan. What happens when they get ready to go buy a car, when they get ready to go purchase furniture, when they get ready to go rent an apartment? They get turned down because their credit is affected. Okay? So it's very important that you make those arrangements, even if you're having any type of hardship. So my suggestion about school loans is only borrow what you need. Okay, so let's say if you only need 3,000 more to pay for all your schooling, but they offered you five, you don't have to take the five. You can take the three, okay? Because the less money you borrow, the less money you have to pay back. Okay, so let me give you an example. Let's say you choose to go to 